Okay, I guess we'll go ahead and get started here. My name is Marie Simhoff. I am the president of the Jackson County, Michigan Historical Society. Um, I want to thank you guys all for coming out today for our first county historical marker dedication ceremony. Um, this is the first marker of many that we're going to be implementing across the county. Um, and it was one of my original visions was starting the Historical Society last year. I, I didn't envision that we would be implementing our first marker within a year, um, but thanks to our friends at Michigan Humanities, we were able to receive a grant um, to be able to get this going. So I'm super excited about these markers. Um, they'll be implemented all across the county in uh, all sorts of towns, Homer, Brooklyn, and even, even here in Jackson. So I'm very excited about that. <laughs> and it is my hope that these markers that will be implemented across the county will generate uh, benefit generations to come. So I thank you all for coming out. Uh, up next, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Daniel Mahoney, uh, Jackson County Commissioner. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Daniel Mahoney. I'm a Jackson County Commissioner. I have been for the last seven years representing the 7th District, which is pretty much the south side and the east side of the city and a small portion of downtown. It is such an honor and privilege to have been invited this uh, afternoon to this um, wonderful historic event in itself. Uh, and I will not be up here for very long because uh, Mari said, don't take too much time. I know you're a politician. Don't be up there forever. I want to start by saying thank you to Maurice and Amhoff, uh, one, for being such a young person who has so much interest in history in itself, which I think is a very rare thing nowadays. I know myself uh, in high school, in junior high, I didn't have very much interest in history because to me it didn't really reflect my history. I never really saw myself in the history that I was taught. But as I've grown, I see the importance of the history that I do know and how much things have changed as far as how history is being told. And I'm just uh, honored to be a part of this event today. Uh, Linda Haas, I wanted to say uh, hello to you as well and thank you for all the work that you do in this community uh, and Wendy Clow as well for your vision and seeing the importance of affordable housing uh, and not just seeing that importance but actually taking the action behind it starting right here at this corner and what you guys are looking to accomplish. Uh, so I just want to congratulate uh, JCMHS uh, on the grant from the Michigan Humanities uh, and National Endowment allowing you guys to continue the work that you've already been doing. Um, and so think about America in 1850s right and the term oil that this country was in at that time. In 1850, on September 18th, the Fugitive Slave Act, which provided the right for slaves to be returned, even if they were in a free state, which is why the Underground Railroad and the things that they were doing at that time is so important. Think further, okay, to right here where we stand in Jackson, Michigan, stood a man by the name of Charles Dillon, who spoke and stood as an anti-slavery advocate anti-slavery not just against slavery but he was an anti-slavery advocate who founded what we know today as the SITPAC right and then also was a founding member of what we know today as the Republican Party so what that tells me as a Democrat right because I am a Democrat what that tells me as a Democrat is that it does not matter what aisle you stand on it matters what side of history you stand on and standing for the right thing Okay, so I just want to leave you with a quote to ponder as I turn the microphone back over to Maurice and the rest of your program. And the quote is by one of my favorite people in history, who is James Baldwin. James Baldwin said, American history is longer, larger, more various, more beautiful, and more terrible than anything that has ever been said about it. Thank you very much. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you, Daniel. I appreciate the words there. Up next, I would like to welcome Wendy Clow, who is the Executive Director for the Greater Habitat Huma for Humanity of Jackson. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to say thank you, first of all, to the Jackson Historical Society um, for, uh, for preserving our history and for Linda Haas and the work that you've done. I've been a fan of both for a long time. I'm an avid reader and I firmly believe that um, preserving history in uh, the form of the written word is extremely important and we are 
just really thrilled to be able to be just a small part of that here. Um, what you see behind us is the uh, six unit or six home neighborhood that we're building, the Habitat for Humanity here in Jackson is building, um, that will take up this entire city block. Um, I think it's considered a city block, but it's going to be six houses. There's going to be four houses on Franklin Street here and then two houses on Mason Street on the opposite side. When we finish our uh, presentation here, you can see we have a sign up on the side of this building here that's actually a rendering of what this street will look like when these four houses are completed. Um, we chose to name the neighborhood Deland Point or Deland Point. I've heard it pronounced a few, a couple of different ways, so I'm not sure which is the proper pronunciation. But we did that because we did learn that the Delands had their homestead here on this corner and that they were an integral part of the, uh, the people that were seeking freedom in that time from slavery. And um, that we feel is such a, an honorable thing and um, it was really important to us. And one of our board members researched the history of this area when we started planning this development and found out the history of the Delands here. And that's when we decided to name it this. And then Linda came to us and, um, and, and expressed her interest in, in really um, kind of exploring that a little bit further. So we're really ex extremely pleased to be part of this. We're so excited about the marker that's gonna live here. Um, and it, I mean, we just can't, it, we can't even um, begin to describe the significance of that connection um, because affordable housing is something that does impact uh, people of color more than not. And that is something that, especially here in Jackson, we are trying to um, help solve or help find solutions for. Um, and this is just one small piece of that. So we're, we're thrilled to be part of this and thank you very much. Thank you, Wendy. Up next, I would like to welcome Linda Haas. Linda is one of the main researchers behind this, this historic area and has done very uh, great research on Charles Deland. So we'll go ahead and welcome Linda. I would like to thank everyone for being here today and a special thanks to Experience Jackson for contributing to this marker and to Habitat for Humanity for allowing us to install it on their property after all. Um, Deland Point is such a worthy landmark for this kind of commemoration because it really represents the best of humanity. As you probably know, the Delands actually they lived at this intersection but they lived kitty corner to this point, right over where the vegetable garden is now. If you can believe it, there was a house and a barn um, in this rural area of town. And um, the Delands lived here from 1851 to 1878. The Delands were a very public family. Um, most people in Jackson knew about the Delands. They had a lot of claims to fame. William was a founder of Jacksonburg, which is what it was called at the time. Um, he founded the early newspapers. He founded the Congregational Church. His son Charles Deland was an anti-slavery editor, was a Civil War hero. So that's what most of the people knew about regarding the Delands, a very public face to the family. But what we honor today is not the public face of the family. We're honoring what they did behind closed doors, under the radar, some, an aspect of their lives that they did not want the public to know about. The Delands participated in the Underground Railroad, which was a system, a really secret system of transportation um, of freedom seekers from the slave states in the South to free states in the North and Canada. And under the cover of darkness, wagons carrying freedom seekers would roll into this very intersection, the point of this intersection, on either Mechanic or Franklin Street, and they would roll into the barn of the Deland property right over there, where the door would be quietly opened, the wagon would roll in, barn door closed, the passengers would emerge underneath the hay, underneath the corn. We know about this because the family wrote about it. They would be fed, they would be cared for, 
And then the next night, the process would begin again, where under the cover of darkness, wagon roll out. Charles Deland would actually drive the wagon to the next stop east, which was usually Grass Lake, then Ann Arbor, then Detroit, and ultimately Canada. What the Delands did, and, and other abolitionists like them, was very risky. It was very dangerous. It was against the law. And specifically, as Daniel said, it was against the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850, which made it a crime to assist any slave trying to escape. Um, Jacksonians hated this law. Um, we could be um, violators, like the Delands, could go to jail. They could be fined to the point of bankruptcy, or if they were caught by a Southern vigilante group, they could be killed outright. But the Delands participated in this anyway as a matter of principle, and we know why they participated in it, because they wrote about it in their diaries. They believed that God created all humanity in his image with inherent dignity. And this was a dignity that transcended races and that slavery was an affront to that dignity. This is what they wrote about for their motivations. And when we, when we, when we honor the land point today, when we honor this marker, what we're really honoring is a spirit of brotherhood that transcends races, that transcends divisions, and reaches out to humanity and to lend a hand up to bring out the best in humanity. And that is what is so special about this marker and about this point. And I know all this happened a long time ago. It happened 150 years ago. And we might be uh, prone to think, why does it matter today? But I think this message of reaching out, um, reaching out um, beyond boundaries, beyond races, to bring out the best in each other, is still a message that resonates with us today. It's still pertinent today. So um, once we unveil this marker, I hope you'll stop here and read what it says from time to time and let its words inspire you, even today, to bring that inspiration right into the present. Uh, and before I close, are there any Delands in the audience today? Uh, there are several Delands that still live in Jackson, so I guess not. But thank you again for being here. Thank you for your interest, and I'll return, uh, return the gathering to Maurice. Thank you, Linda. I really appreciate a lot of your research that you've done on this. Can we go ahead and give Linda another round of applause? She's done a great amount of work on this, so we appreciate that. Um, Linda has, has served as our secretary for the Historical Society, and we also have Mr. Ganton, who serves on the board of our Historical Society here as well, so thank you for coming. Uh, we would like to go ahead and proceed with the unveiling of the marker. Thank you all for coming out. We really appreciate it. I hope you get the chance to come up and read about the history that happened here on the site. Thank you very much. <laughs>